2021 has certainly been an interesting year in the real estate world with houses selling for over asking price, sometimes way over asking price, competing offers, uh, houses so booked you can't even schedule a showing, buyers giving up inspections, buyers skipping appraisals. It's It's been crazy <laughs> to say the least. There are a lot of stories out there that are true and some that are just not quite so true. So stick around and we're gonna take a look at where we've been, where we're going, and what's really happening in the Oregon, Wisconsin, market update. Hey Oregon, it's Jeff here of the Minter team at Realty Executives, Cooper Spranzi. So what's really going on out there? Is everything competitive? Is everything going over asking price? Uh, if a house is listed at 300, is it always going to sell for 350? Not exactly. In fact, what we're going to do today is take a deep dive into the numbers and take a look at what's really happening in our local market. Locally, only 58% of homes in 2021 have sold over asking price. That goes against the narrative that everything is, right? And in fact, it gets even more interesting when we start looking at what happened before June 30th and what's happened since July 1st. If we look at before June 30th, we find that 64% of our houses sold more than asking price. That's a lot, that's a really high number. But since July 1st, closings in Oregon uh, that have closed since July 1st have only closed at a rate of 49% selling over asking price. That's a big difference. And it's not just selling over asking price that shows a real difference. In fact, if we look at how much houses have sold over asking price, you're gonna see it there too. And for the year, Oregon has sold roughly $2,900 over asking price on the typical average home sale. But prior to June 30th, we take a look at this graph, you're gonna see that houses in Oregon that closed before June 30th sold on average for $8,300 over asking price. And what's even more remarkable is that closings that have happened after July 1st have sold for $5,600 under asking price. That's a $14,000 difference in closings before June 30th and after June 30th in terms of the average sale compared to asking price. Days on market, same thing. We take a look at what's going on in town and you'll see that before June 30th, they were on the market for way fewer days than houses after that have closed after July 1st. In fact, uh, what's more interesting is I'm going to pull this up here and we look at the houses sold over asking price um, are here in blue. And before June 30th, they sold an average eight days. After July 1st, they sold an average of seven days. But the houses that sold for less than asking were on the market for, uh, make sure I got the right number here, 31 days on average before June 30th and up to, uh, where are we at here? and up to 87, excuse me, 87 days on average um, for houses that have sold under asking price after July 1st. That's a huge difference. And that really speaks to how crazy the market was leading up to those closings that happened earlier in the year and what's happened since then. We see the same thing when we take a look at showing activity. We take a look at this graph right here and you'll see that the line is the showing activity for uh, showings in Oregon this year. Uh, whereas the uh, the red is the average activity over the last three years. And you'll see that we had this huge blip right here, um, and that is early March through early May, where we had a lot of showings happening and well above average. But outside of that, showing activity has been pretty par for the course. So what does all this mean? It means that in reality, it's it's been a seller's market. Uh, it is a seller's market. And that's what we've seen for the last few years. But what happened this year is we had a really, really wild spring. And then we kind of came back to, I guess, what we could call our new normal, which is the seller's market that we've seen for the last few years. So all of this is super important to understand if you're considering entering the market, either as a home seller or as a home buyer. Obviously, number one thing that we can see is that the timing of things really matters. And what's happened in the market isn't necessarily what's happening in the market. And I would expect what this is going to show us is that in 2022, we're probably going to see much of the same thing because quite frankly, we've seen this activity happen the last few years. But why was this year so crazy? It, 
has to do with a couple things and the biggest thing being inventory if we take a look at the available homes in oregon by month each month was the least number of homes available at the end of the month when compared to any of the previous years going back to 2013 which is you know where i stopped being able to gather information so uh, basically each year set a record for low number of houses available all throughout dane county we saw a decrease in available houses for each month of 50 percent or more from the previous two years so when you take what was already low inventory last year in 2019, 2018, 2017, and you decrease that by 50%, I mean, we're getting at really, really low level. And this isn't because houses weren't coming on the market. Houses were being listed at the same rate as they were in previous years, but they were just selling so fast that we weren't able to keep anything on the market and grow our inventory to a more, uh, I suppose, a better level for home buyers. So what does this all mean? Is the market gonna crash? Is it gonna shift? Is the bubble gonna burst? These are all things I've heard from consumers. And the reality is we have such a far ways to go um, before we get to any type of situation where we could have a massive, massive shift. We're not in a situation, despite home prices going up, we're not in a situation where things are going to burst. We have too many houses to get back on the market. For comparison, we had six times as many houses on the market in 2011 as we had at the end of August uh, in 2021. 10 years ago, we had six times as many houses available. We have a long ways to go to get back to that, and it's gonna take a long, long time to get there. So I don't think 2022 is gonna be the year. This means for home sellers, a few things. Number one, if you wanna get the best terms and the most competition for your house, it's probably ideal to put your house on the market sometime March, April, May. That doesn't mean that people that put their house on the market in June, July, August, September aren't going to be getting great offers or possibly even selling for more money than the people that put their house on the market in March. It's just that you're, you're likely to have more competition in that initial period than I would expect in the summer or the early fall. Uh, the benefit of putting your house on the market later is that you do have comps to support higher prices. Um, but again, the downside is there's going to be less competition, which creates the auction frenzy of people giving up home inspections and appraisals and, and so on and so forth. So it depends on what you're really looking for. You know, if you want an easy sale earlier in the year where you can create that competition and dictate your terms, great time to do it. If you want to make the absolute most money, probably somewhere in the summer or fall. Sellers also don't want to cut corners. Look, there's a reason that 42% of the houses in Oregon did not sell for more than asking price. In a market where supposedly everything is, why did these 42% not? Chances are they were overpriced, underprepared, undermarketed. People cut corners and tried to take the easy way out, tried to take advantage of the market to make something happen that's not realistic. The houses that are getting the most competition, the houses that are selling for the highest over asking price, the houses where people are foregoing inspections are the houses that are effectively prepared, which means the sellers did a great job of getting the house ready. They possibly had it staged and it looks like it belongs in a magazine. Okay, the marketing is fantastic. The photography is fantastic. There's video. It's getting lots of views outside of Zillow, uh, which means you know through other online ad platforms and people are flocking to these houses. Those are the ones that are getting the best terms. The people that are you know, slapping a couple things together and taking some pictures with their iPhone are not getting the same level of, uh, of response as the people that are not cutting the corners. So if you want the absolute best, you have to still put in the work. Can you sell your house without doing it? Yes. Is it likely you're gonna get the most money, the most offers, so on and so forth? No. So it depends once again on what you're trying to uh, what you're trying to accomplish with your goals. Buyers, what does this all mean for you? Well, it means that actually right now is not a bad time to buy a house. It's not as competitive as it's going to be February, March, April, May, June, um, and so therefore you're going to be competing against fewer offers. It is true prices are higher now than they were in January, and uh, you're going to see the same thing happen. So you know a three hundred thousand dollar house now is likely to be listed at three ten, three fifteen come March, April, May. And so by waiting, what you're doing is you're putting yourself into a very competitive buyer pool and you're seeing higher prices. And that doesn't mean you jump at any house, you know, just to avoid that right now. Obviously, you want to make sure the right house comes along. What I'm trying to get across is that if the right house comes along right now, 
it might be a better financial situation for you than waiting to the springtime to make your move. Buyers, regardless of whether you're shopping right now or waiting to the spring, you got to do two things. And number one is get a pre-approval with a lender that can deliver a quick loan commitment and has the respect of other agents in town. When you have 20 offers on the table, your lender matters and the experience that the other agent has had with that lender matters. So you want to make sure that you are working with somebody who is going to be able to beef up your offer without you offering more money. Okay, make you look stronger without um, without you having to do anything different. Okay, so pick your your lender wisely. Your agent should be able to recommend people that have that sort of support and will be able to give you that leverage in competitive offer situations. And number two, you have to start working with a realtor because uh, a number of houses last year actually sold with what's called a sight unseen offer. Um, that is not going to happen if you don't have a realtor to get you through that process. Okay, so if you are going into those competing situations, it's going to be almost impossible to compete in those types of things unless you have somebody that can walk you through that option. Uh, it doesn't mean you have to do sight unseen, but it's not even going to be an opportunity if, um, if you don't have that situation. Your realtor is also going to be able to make sure that you get scheduled and get in right away when a house becomes available. Um, if you're waiting for things to pop up on Zillow or uh, waiting for them to pop up on Realtor.com or whatever else, you might be too late. Okay, A, a number of houses this year sold, um, or excuse me, didn't sell, but they were booked with showings uh, within hours of becoming public. Um, so if that's what you're waiting for, you might just flat out miss out. So you need to make sure that you have somebody who's going to be working on things proactively and ahead of time. All right. I know that was a ton of stuff, but look, 2021 was a big year. And quite frankly, there's a lot of misconceptions, even though there's a lot of truth in what's going on out there. So, uh, you know, I wanted to make sure that we had the real numbers out there and the real feedback on what you guys should be thinking about uh, as you may or may not be getting ready to make a move. So as always, if you have any questions about your unique situation, leave us a comment or you know, give us a call, shoot us an email, uh, whatever's gonna work best for you. We're always happy to talk and help our Oregon neighbors. That's it for now. Once again, I'm Jeff. Thanks for checking in and we'll talk soon. Take care.